Hey, good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Hey, good morning, Anthem. My name is Pastor Chris. I am the pastor of communities here, and I'm so excited that you're gathering with us this morning um, to— <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, sorry about that, but just to gather with you guys and to celebrate um, all that Jesus is and what he's done in our lives, and I'm so thankful for you having, uh, joining us this morning. And since you're here, we want to connect with you, and the best way that you can do that, since we're meeting in this uh, digital space right now, is just to text the church. You can text us at 971 971- 238-9702. You can text us, let us know you're here, send us your prayer requests. Uh, we'd love to pray for you, and we want to be able to do that. So go ahead, and you can do that now. <clears throat> and also, you can follow us on our Facebook and our Instagram if you want to do that. It's at Anthem Tribe, as well as you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. Just go ahead and click that subscribe button below, give us a like, and you can, that way you can get all of the, our content just right to you whenever you want, and whenever we're putting it out. So also, Anthem Kids, we have <clears throat> some stuff for you today. So if you want to go ahead and grab that, um, we have some, con- uh, some st- uh, stuff available for you right in the uh, link below. So just go ahead and click that. Miss Jenny has put that together for you guys. Discussion questions for you and for parents to go over to learn, uh, uh, to learn about Jesus and, and grow uh, more, uh, to be more like him. So go ahead and do that right now. So I just got two quick announcements for you guys this Sunday. Um, really exciting is that we are right now looking at regathering sometime um, next, uh, hopefully August 1st is going to be the date that we're planning on, on regathering. So it's going to be next Sunday at 4 p.m. right here at First Night Methodist in Beaverton. So if you are in the great, um, greater Beaverton area, the greater Portland area, and you're part of our tribe, it's going to be a great time to gather. We'll be releasing that information about how we're going to be gathering, what the protocols are going to be, everything like that. Um, <clears throat> that'll be all available. It'll be coming out in the next few days. So just go ahead and be on the lookout for that. Um, but we're excited. I'm excited to um, be gathering with you guys because uh, I haven't really done that ever. So I'm really excited for that, and I can't wait to make that happen. The last announcement I have for you guys is the uh, what I'm calling drink for the kids. But we are collecting um, we are recyclables, recyclable cans and bottles and things like that. Um, anything that you would <clears throat> recycle here in Oregon. Uh, we have these special bags that we, you can use to uh, give to us. And then that, all the money from that is going to go to Lola House to support Lola House and uh, just continue to help them serve uh, children and their mothers who are uh, in Ethiopia. So th- th- thank you so much for doing that. So if you need any more information about that, feel free to email the church or reach out to us and we'll help you get connected with that. So um, let me go ahead and uh, let me read <clears throat> our scripture for the service. And and this is what the, the word of the Lord says. If you have your Bibles, you can grab them and bring them out. Uh, this is Psalm 148, and it goes like this. Um, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he has issued his command, and they became into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire, hail, and snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for our service. Heavenly Father God, um, we just come before you right now. I'm thankful for um, honestly, what this uh, verse, this, this passage of scripture talked about, your creation, um, the beauty that you've made to glorify you, but the world that you've created for us to dwell in it with you. And it is such a beautiful, amazing 
thing that um, I celebrate every single day because you are so good and you have given that to us. So, I, Father, I pray that at this time as we are uh, going to have these conversations about life in the kingdom of God, I pray that this conversation, Father, would be uh, enlightening to people to see uh, your glory in everything that you've created, that you are God who is good and who loves us and made this world for us so that we can dwell in it with you. So just be with us in this time. I thank you for all that. and pray that you bless this conversation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, we're doing this Coffee with Jesus series, and I've been having we had a conversation last week with Lauren, and we actually can bring up a very special guest, someone you all know, I'm sure. It is Kyle Kinsler, and he has been with Anthem longer than I have, um, but he is um, just— how, how long have we been with you? You can come on up. Yeah. I'm going right. to stay oh, right Okay, here. that's right. Yeah. So you, just, <laughs> you can just squeeze that. We'll sit down. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. And you've, how long have you been with Anthem? I think it's been... Think since the beginning. Yeah, since the beginning. So that's so yeah, quite a we long were, time. We were yeah. in the backyard. I think Paul sent out a text of him praying with Alita yeah. as a baby in his yeah, uh, arm. That. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a good text. It was when Paul had hair, which is yeah. very jarring to see. Yeah. Like, every time I see it, I'm like, oh my gosh, is that, is that real? Is that a, like, is it alive on his head, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like sometimes. So, yeah. last week it was the monster. This week it's going to be the hair. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. So, anyway. Um, but anyway, we called the series Coffee with Jesus. So, I have made coffee as always, my favorite drink. And this is still the same Kenyan from last week, but you said you liked a dark roast. So I yeah. decided to get that for you. So we'll go ahead and pour this out. And uh, still from Boring Bean, obviously not a sponsor, but if you're ever heading, heading out towards Mount Hood, they are a great little coffee place um, that's out there, coffee roaster. And I, I love them. So yeah. All right, All right. cheers. Here, yeah. Cheers. Cool. Awesome. Perfect, perfect. Ooh, that was good. That was good. That's exactly what I needed. Yeah, Mm. you know, everyone's going to be seeing this in the morning, but it is, you know, almost 8 o'clock at night, and I'm a little bit nervous if this is not decaf, so. (laughs) It is not decaf, and I'm going to be awake for a while. You know, it's good. I got stuff to do, so. All right, fair enough. (laughs) I I guess I do, too. (laughs) Or I'm going to find stuff to do. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Well, great. So, um... So obviously the, the topic that we chose today, which is a kind of an odd topic for uh, churches or pastors to be talking about, but uh, the topic is science and creation. Mm-hmm. And w- I brought you aboard uh, to talk about this today because um, science is kind of what you do in some, to some degree. I, I do uh, like yeah, it. Yeah, you do like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of what you decided to put a part of your career in. So why don't you tell us about like, um, you know, what your degrees are and, and your science teacher and what, what got you into that and, and go from there, so. Yeah, um, I uh, kind of grew up um, curious and uh, went to college and bounced around majors a little bit, but finally kind of found some professors that I really kind of clicked with. Um, So graduated um, with a liberal arts degree, but an emphasis in math and science, really still not quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, And then ended up going to grad school um, in Arizona uh, at Arizona State yeah. and studied biology there. So I got a master's in biology there and got to do some research up in the Arctic, which was really fun. Cool. Um, and then I uh, also got a degree in teaching too, so right. I could teach yeah. at the high school level because I really found that I like to teach people about some of the science stuff that I got really excited about. That's awesome, yeah. And what, uh, what made you excited? What's, what, what, do you, what, what makes you passionate about teaching? Uh, I just want uh, kids to find some of the fascination that I do with some of these things that are happening around us and see that there's so much going on and there's so many things that we can we can work on and solve and try to figure out. Uh, and so I want to try to tap into kids' brains and, yeah. and get them. I love seeing those aha moments when they right. start, finally start to see something coming together. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's really amazing. I, yeah, I too grew up with a fascination with science. Um, I for a long time wanted to be an astronomer. I had just about every single, you know, or it probably would have morphed into being an astrophysicist or something like that. But I probably had like uh, every book on space that I could possibly have, mm-hmm. like as a kid. And uh, growing up in Florida, I was near like NASA and stuff like that. So I actually got to um, uh, camp out underneath the Saturn V rocket that they still keep there. Mm-hmm. I actually had like a sleepover for like homeschool groups, and I actually got to sleep underneath it, which was yeah. which was really exciting. So yeah. That was, uh, science has always been a fascination for, for me too. And, uh, you know, love, 
I love still learning about it and studying about it. So yeah. yeah. What uh what 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 kind of like inspired you? Like made you interested in the in science and like maybe as a kid or even as you got older. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned I'm pretty curious. I've always asked a lot of questions. Yeah. I don't know that everyone has always appreciated that yeah. about me, but um, <laughs> I, I like to know how things work. I like to know the intricacies. And so um, I've, I've always asked questions. Um, I did have an elementary school teacher that uh, was really passionate about science um, and really kind of uh, planted that seed. And yeah. then uh, kind of along the way, I, I diverted a little bit. I went to high school and Oh. got really into architecture and drafting stuff. Sure. And I thought that's exactly where my life was going to go, excuse me. Um, and I took the bare minimum amount of science, which in Idaho at the time was two years. Okay. And so I took two years of science and I was just done. Uh, but then when I went to college, I kind of, yeah. I clicked with some teachers and I found, you know, that, that it is actually super interesting and took a lot of different yeah. science classes and, um, got really into it again. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> that's great. Um, now, when, um, when it comes to science and, and what we've talked about, I mean, I think one of the biggest challenges that we just have in, in our world today is, you know, can, can we trust people? So the first question we have here is like, what is science and, and can we trust it? Mm -hmm. can, can we trust scientists? Can we trust what science is? is what is it? You know, mm -hmm. um, and I, so I know you prepared some stuff and yeah. then we, can just, we can just start with that. So. Yeah, so I mean, I think that this can be kind of a challenge, challenging thing to, to grapple with if people don't really yeah. understand, but um, science is just really kind of a systematic way of understanding how things work, right? right? And so um, it not only, you know, things that we can see, but all of the living and non-living interactions in the whole universe. I mean, we, it, it encompasses everything, right? And so it's yeah. a very systematic approach of, you know, how do we actually go through investigating and looking at something? Right. And so... Um, I, I believe it's extremely trustworthy and there's yeah. a lot of uh, rigor that goes along with it. Um, i throw up a, an image here of um, a very specific protocol. So I'm yeah. sure a lot of people have, have learned the scientific method in elementary school, mm -hmm. middle school, high school, all along the way, uh, right? So uh, yeah. people make an, you know, an observation, they see something, mm -hmm. oh, that's kind of weird. Right. Uh, and then they ask a question about it and then they start to do some research. They maybe, you know, come up with a hypothesis and then they test it and then they start to analyze their data and mm -hmm. then draw conclusions and, and see if their hypothesis was supported or not. And so I think that the way that, that this um, systematic protocol is done is really important because I think that yeah. it, it keeps it standardized across the board. Right, yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize that they do this all the time anyway, yeah. right? When there's something going on that doesn't work yeah. quite right, like why is, why is my drain not draining, you know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. then you kind yeah. of you'd work through a lot of that in your head anyway, right? And so um, it's just it, a very specific protocol though that's done in science. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, what, um, I don't know if you wanna, how much you wanna elaborate that on that some more, but just like what, how does that like you and you brought up a great example of like <clears throat> in our lives we kind of do a similar thing like we mm -hmm. do you know we, we observe that there's a problem like my car broke down you know my car isn't having an issue mm -hmm. like i take mm -hmm. it or maybe i i investigate it myself i check out the um i check out the uh the, the you know di use my diagnostic tools to discover what the problem is and i right. attempt to theorize and hypothesize what the problem could be. And then I, you know, <laughs> attempt to fix it. And then, you know, hopefully it, get, it gets fixed eventually. So I think that's such a great point is that uh, <clears throat> the scientific process is the process which we kind of have already used in our day to day mm -hmm. lives. Like it's something that, I um, mean, those maybe it's not as rigorous as scientists use themselves, but it's very similar to what, what we do, you know, on yeah. our own. And um, that allows us to kind of see like, oh, well, if, if I'm a person and I am just, um, <clears throat> and I'm just going about my day-to-day -day life and I use a similar process, well, and I, I trust the processes that I use to, to right. fix my car or fix my sink or, you know, solve this problem for, you know, my kid who's like, you know, you know, iPad's not working, whatever, you know, like I can trust the, what scientists are doing because they're using a similar and even more rigorous process the conclusions they're coming to. Yeah. Right. And this, and the scientific method, I mean, really kind of designs experiments, right? right. So, you, so yeah. kind of figuring this out, but then there's this whole other world that most people don't realize. And it's, yeah. you know, writing up your results yeah. and that's a whole other, you know, trustworthy, you know, protocol that happens is scientists go, wow, okay, this is, this is what I'm seeing. My yeah. hypothesis is either supported or not, but I need to 
put this out there. And so then they, you know, they write up a manuscript, they uh, see a journal that they want to send it to, and they yep. go through a peer review process where, you know, I, I've been on the other end of that, where I've gotten yeah. an article that's like, hey, this needs to be peer reviewed. And so we look through the data and we go, okay, does this make sense? Are there conclusions? Are they running statistics that are, you know, applicable? Yeah. And right. so working through that, and then, you know, the, the magazine gets to decide, yeah. do I even want to publish this? Is this right. even worth putting out there? Right. Yeah. But all that data ends yeah. up going out there for anyone to review. Exactly. And uh, what I think has been, and then everyone can kind of change things along the way. We find maybe that was done a little bit differently. Yep. And maybe their conclusions are not wrong or not right or not supported, but that it's, so there's constantly evolving things in science. And I think that's really important. And I think, <clears throat> with COVID too, especially, yeah. I've noticed this, and there's, this was so novel, and it happened yeah. so quickly, but the yeah. scientific community has come together, and yeah. they have been publishing all sorts of data, yes. right? And so it's been scrutinized by so many different yeah. scientists, and scientists love to scrutinize. Yes. They love to look, <laughs> yes, and go, exactly. look at people's data and go, yeah. does this make sense or not? And <clears throat> scientists have to be able to defend what they're saying. Right. And so there's been things that even I have been concerned with. And I've emailed mm -hmm. scientists at the CDC and said, yeah. I don't think you can make these claims, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's really mm -hmm. important in science because yeah. we see that you know, some of these really uh, famous scientists that are making you know, claims across the whole, for the whole country and then they're changing their mind. It's like, but they're changing their mind because they're right. using the most current evolving data. Yeah. And so that's why, I mean, I think the scientific yeah. protocol is so trustworthy right. is because it's very transparent, right? Yeah. It's out there for everyone to see. Anyone can analyze their data again and see what's going on and yeah. ask questions. Yeah, absolutely. I think that even makes it like, you know, more rigorous than your, than you trying to figure out what's wrong with your sink because there's no one coming to check on your sink work right. later on, you right. know, unless your wife's harassing you or something like that. But like, you know, like, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But you know, like the, no, no one else is doing that. And, um, and yeah, and I think, you know, I, I love Google Scholar. I, I go mm -hmm. to that all the time to find research papers and like to dig into it and find yeah. that, that data and information is out there and it's, a, it's an open process. And if it wasn't open, then, uh, then it'd be actually more difficult to trust, mm -hmm. it, but it's an open process that we all can, uh, can be a part of. So that's great. Um, now, as a, you know, like the ne my next question here is like, what is your relationship with science? Like as a follower of Jesus, what, how, how do you, you know, kind of mold your faith and your view of science together? Yeah. So this is, this was one of the questions that I kind of struggled yeah. with the most. Yeah. And, um, a lot of it is because I think, you know, having worked with a lot of scientists when I was doing my yeah. grad program and, and doing some research that I've done since, um, you work with a lot of scientists and it just kind of tends to be that scientists are non-believers. Right. I'm not going to say at all that that's a blanket statement because yeah. um, it's not, but a lot of scientists are so kind of bound by the scientific yeah. protocol and religion is, is really a belief system, yeah. right? And so it's not something that you can put through this scientific method and test it in ways that you can test science. Yeah. And so a lot of times for me, I kind of feel like I separate them to some degree. Mm -hmm. So when I'm thinking about science, I'm thinking about very systematic approach, right. number driven, all these things that I can manipulate something and see a result because I've done that. Whereas like, I can't manipulate God. I can't right. manipulate something and have God do something. Right. right so, right. so it's really hard to kind of combine the two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also that doesn't necessarily mean that God doesn't have his hand in a lot of science. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fantastic <clears throat> point. I think, um, a lot of people do struggle with that, especially they struggle with the fact, like if, if science is supposed to be like the lens, which like, I think, and that's the other issue too, is that, um, as, as important as science is and as like, we absolutely need it is definitely not the only lens which we have to have to view the mm -hmm. world. Like we have so many other lenses and faith can be one of them right. for sure. And I think that's always like the struggle is like, how much do I depend on science and where does my faith come in and how do they speak to each other? You know, and um, that's, that's always been the struggle that I have uh, run into for, for the most part as a pastor is the, that, that struggle where people go like, well, you know, like science says this and the, the Bible says this, and they're constantly trying to bash mm -hmm. the two against each other. And really, um, 
holding them both separately and I'm talking about different areas is is actually truly like where the, where it's at like you're not going to um you know pull out your toaster manual to try to fix your car like right. it's just not going to, to to work you know and um god definitely speaks into a creation where he can be a part of it and i believe he is um but it doesn't mean that there aren't systems and processes that he created like as we just read that that beautiful psalm mm -hmm. where like this is ever all of creation is he created is for his glory and for his purposes that includes all of the processes which science is discovering right it includes includes all of the uh you know the creatures and all of the the systems and all the you know the the theories that science is, is going through and that is um a part of god's domain and that can be seen and understood mm -hmm. and recognized through the tool of science which i think god has given us rational human beings right yeah no, no I, yeah. yeah i think that's true i think that I, I do think a lot of the to the the combativeness is you know, they're both trying to explain very yeah. similar things. I mean, people are, mm. are really interested in, you know, creation yeah. in life and, yeah. and both science and religion are trying to explain those yeah. things, but they don't yeah. work together in trying yeah. to explain that. And so I do yeah. think that there is some of that combativeness, but there doesn't necessarily need to be exactly. in a lot of instances. Yeah, exactly. It's two different ways of explaining, you know, and some people say, well, this is like the why, like God is the why and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, science is the how. And I think to a degree, that's correct you know and i think also that um the it's, it's i think it's even more than the why it's almost like the the, the re, with god it's the the reason for being it's the being in and of itself you mm -hmm. know uh, as, a, as you know as the bible says it's in him that we move and live and have our being like god is the essence of it all the, the science is attempting to just understand that essence in a in a very detailed way that we can you know because unfortunately we can't have you know every single detail in right. in a in a book in, in a book you know in a book uh that's it's rather difficult but god can explain himself to us through that book and through mm -hmm. scripture and through the person of jesus right. which he ultimately does so yeah yeah that's great um so the uh, next thing was is where had you seen uh, God or Jesus in creation? You brought us some examples today, so I'm yeah. excited to go through them. Yeah, um, I, this is where I might uh, nerd out a little bit, but I yeah. have, um, you know, I've, I've studied, I've been, you know, done a bunch of different courses and things, and, and I've realized, yeah. um, you know, the, the more that I learn, the more I realize that I don't know things. Right. And I think that that's true, yeah. not just in science, but in pretty much any field, right? It like is, you absolutely. really yep. quickly yep. realize, wow, I thought I knew this, and I realize now how much more intricate this is. Yep. And, um, but, it, but the intricacies are super fascinating mm -hmm. too. And looking at how these interactions and things take place, it's really hard to believe that there isn't something else playing a role. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I teach anatomy and looking at the human body is ridiculous. Like yeah. the human body is amazing what it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, it fights constantly for us, mm -hmm. keeps us alive. Um, it does so many different things for us. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really hard for me to believe that, right. that there's nothing, you know, yeah. else going on. So, yeah, absolutely. So what yeah. are some of those examples? <clears throat> All right. So um, I have been uh, really fascinated with kind of what's been going on with COVID. I really um, have in, enjoyed learning more about the immune system. I teach yeah. anatomy and I've focused a lot um, on that in class. And so just uh, this last week <clears throat> in my course, I was learning about B and T cells, which are our fighter yeah. cells, right? They're white blood cells that uh, fight infection. And they're, the, they're not the inflammation stuff. They're the, the ones that remember and recognize and go fight very specific things. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> B cells, really cool. Extracellular, so they fight things that are outside of cells. Okay. T cells, though, um, I, I realized this week, um, evolved through convergent evolution, which yeah. convergent evolution is that there's two separate lineages that, that formed this separately, right? Okay, so they didn't come from a common ancestor. Yeah. They both evolved to have T cells huh. okay. and in different, uh, different ways. And so uh, there are, T cells are just super fascinating too. And so yeah. T cells, um, they also recognize, they recognize cells that have been infected. <clears throat> So if you have a cell that's infected and it goes, hey, I got something inside of me, I need you to come kill me. 
Yeah. And so yeah. it puts some molecules out on its surface and T cells go, okay, I can see that. Yeah. But just B and T cells themselves are interesting because B cells don't recognize, or I guess they can recognize those, but T cells mm -hmm. don't recognize what B cells do. And so they have very mm -hmm. specific roles where they don't, I mean, it, it seems like theoretically they wouldn't necessarily need to have different roles, right, but they right. have very specific purposes that just, yeah. to me, make, um, make it really hard to believe that there's not something so else kind of going, wow, yeah. this, this is really important <laughs> that we do these <laughs> different <laughs> things, yeah. right? Right, right, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, see the design or the, the purpose in it. Right, yeah, and yeah, so, exactly. yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was B cells, they... They can attack anything, but T cells are blind to anything except for peptides that are on the surface of an infected cell. Okay. And so T cells could be in the middle of a whole bunch of viruses that Got they're it. trying to kill, basically, but they can yeah. only detect the peptide on the surface of a cell, not the virus. Okay. That makes sense. And so it's really weird that they are very specifically fo focused on infected cells, whereas huh. B cells will attack the other stuff. That's fascinating, because yeah. I think, I think um, <clears throat> uh, shocking actually, I have something to talk about this, which is... Um, uh, so I have type 1 diabetes, and mm. I actually have like what's called a late adult, adult onset mm -hmm. type 1 diabetes. And from what I understood is that it was that my T cells attacked um, the cells in my pancreas. Mm -hmm. Now I realize, I also heard someone say that it's like I had an infection in my pancreas. Now I understand what that, that meant. Yeah. But it meant that the, there was an infection, and the T cells went in there and went after it. And of course, that decreased my ability to produce mm -hmm. insulin as much as I could because those cells got infected. But I didn't realize that those two actually were like, talking about the same thing <laughs> until mm -hmm. he just said that i'm like oh that yeah. makes sense so what happened is i had an infection and then the t-cells went yeah. in there and they go went ahead and, and attacked that kind of a bummer but also saved my life too yeah. at the same yeah. time so yeah so that's pretty great so cool yeah, yeah i mean if we didn't have our immune system yeah. i mean we yeah, we'd be done it would be very <laughs> tragic yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other thing I was just going to mention too, I, so I did as part of my graduate program, um, yeah. I, my wife was in yeah. uh, PT school in Arizona. That's what brought us down there. She knew yeah. what she wanted to do. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, I was interested in science, but she knew. So mm -hmm. we went to Arizona. She got into school down there. Um, I worked for a little bit and then I told yeah. her, I said, I'm really interested in oceanography. Yeah. And I don't know if you know much about Arizona, but there's not an ocean. Not right? an ocean, so, no. So no. it's not a great place to study <laughs> oceanography. Yeah. Um, but yeah. uh, I met up with this professor at Arizona State, and she said, yeah, I've got two projects. And she's like, nice. honestly, it didn't matter if I'm on the coast or where I am. She's like, one of them is in the Arctic, and one of them is in Bermuda. And so... Um, Not bad places to go, either one. So, well, yeah. 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 And yeah. so um, I, I don't love the heat. Um, okay. I, I like to be cold. And so I was yeah. like, I'll, I'll do the Arctic thing. And that's where cool. she had some openings. And so um, I ended up getting to go up and do that and learning quite a bit about um, what's going on up there. And I studied these really marvelous creatures. They're microscopic organisms. You can't see them with the naked eye, yeah. but they're called diatoms. And there's okay. some uh, pictures that uh, I took using a scanning electron microscope. Nice. Uh, which you have to use this microscope yeah. if you're going to look at things that are really, really small. Yeah. Uh, but they're super cool. They're, um, they're made of glass. Okay. And so they're super well protected. Um, wow. People sometimes use them in their pool filter system. So okay. if anyone's looking at building a pool, they should maybe yeah. look into a diatomaceous earth okay. uh, pool system. Luke. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're pretty fascinating <laughs> creatures. And so in the yeah. Arctic, um, we, we put ice cubes in our, in our drinks and, and you know, we, we right. recognize they're clear, right? We can see right through it. Uh -oh. Sea ice, when it gets cold enough or when the sea gets cold enough, it does freeze, yeah. but it creates brine channels. And so okay. the salt um, comes out of solution. It gets stronger and stronger. And so it never really freezes all the way through. So it leaves these pores and these holes all throughout yeah. the ice. Yeah. And uh, so uh, these diatoms actually live in there and they kind of go dormant during the winter. Um, but they form the base of the food web yeah. in the spring. And so they, okay. they start to, to grow again and replicate. Wow. And what's, what's so amazing is these creatures that have no real, or we didn't think they really had a, a way of mobility, mm. are able to excrete stuff okay. and move up and down in the brine <laughs> channels based on wow. light availability. So they're super okay. well adapted to low light environments. And really? so they will move up and down within the ice uh, to get the light that they need. And the whole community of diatoms, there's lots of different mm. species, but it shifts based on the light. So okay. as the light becomes more intense, they start to migrate farther and farther down some of the low light ones. Mm. 
uh, into the core and some of the ones that need more light start to grow a little bit more. Got it. Uh, and so uh, the, the ice cores we would drill through and we would sample and we kind of see what's going on. And, and if you look at the bottom of an ice core, they're brown, they're greenish brown, they're gross. Yep, same right there. Yeah. yeah, and it's a bunch of diatoms, algae that are down there. Right. And in the spring, that all kind of melts off into the water Got and it, it forms the base of the food web. So wow. uh, the, the whales come through and, and eat some of the stuff that's in there. And then mm -hmm. the, uh, the natives up there will sometimes hunt the whales Right. And um, so it's, it's this whole very, ecosystem. yeah, it's a yeah. whole ecosystem yeah. that's uh, very sustainable. It's very, it's a really interesting and fascinating system. I never realized even existed. Right. And then going up there, I'm just like, I, I just don't understand how this can be without, yeah. without something <laughs> else playing some, some part, creator. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and I was just in Alaska and uh, with my other job and that was a fantastic opportunity to like be there and, and, you know, I was just dumbfounded by just the, the immense scope of creation in Alaska. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I've always lived in uh, suburbs and uh, urban areas and to see just like the immensity of the mountains and the, just the immensity of life of all kinds. It, it's just everywhere throughout all of Alaska. And it was a really eye opening uh, time for me just to see the beauty of God's creation and just how amazing he's built all of our the life here on on earth and the systems mm -hmm. that that we have it, it's just incredible and i saw tons of moose and and we were driving into alaska uh from the airport i drove we drove by the alaska zoo mm -hmm. and i was like why is there an alaska zoo <laughs> like yeah. the entire state is there's more moose than people at this yeah. point you know so so it was just it was just crazy because uh but it was amazing to just see all of that that beauty and just the entire if if you ever get a chance to go go because it's just it will open your eyes to the world that god made for us to enjoy and dwell and glorify him in so uh let's move on to our next question which was basically uh and you know we're talking about creation is and i believe biblically that there's a biblical basis for the care of creation mm -hmm. like in genesis um the first uh two chapters there uh god cre you know creates the world and uh you see um uh that he's ordering creation uh for us uh, that it's made in a particular way and then uh dwells with us and gives us the responsibility to care for and have the dominion over and and uh, you know uh, oversee creation and uh then you know there's a whole garden which is gives us a whole imagery of us taking care of a mm -hmm. garden that's what gardens are their gardens are created by people to be managed and to cultivate the earth right. and to make it grow and prosperous and and that that mandate hasn't changed even after the fall and with jesus coming back that mandate's still there god right. hasn't changed his his command that we are uh, supposed to be stewards of his creation. So, uh, like, why should Christians care for creation from from your perspective, and and how have you been influenced? Uh, how, how's your like, you know, uh, uh, I should say like, you know, career in science influenced your view of that? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I um, kind of what you said. Yeah. I, I we are tasked. God has tasked us with um, the responsibility of taking care of our yeah. earth, and I. And I don't think that, um, I think we need to give ourselves some grace too. Yeah. I think that, yeah. you know, there, we've realized over time, like that there are some things that are really bad, right? Yeah, right. Um, oil spills and, you know, we realize now how bad they are yet. We didn't even yeah. use to cap, right? Oil right, drilling sites right. and they're yeah. still spewing oil everywhere. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, as, we, as we've kind of realized some of this stuff, um, we need to, you know, give ourselves some grace and go, right. okay, well, we, we didn't know that. And it's our yeah. responsibility to kind of use the current information that we have and go, okay, yeah. wait, there's, there's definitely things though that we can do yeah. to help protect ourselves and our environment. And yeah. there's, there's a lot of different ways that, that you know, we can. Yeah. And so I think that, um, that we're tasked to do it by God, but I think that we also just need to realize like, we're not perfect. Right, of course. So, I mean, yeah. I am, but yeah, right. <laughs> um, most people aren't. So, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's a great point um, to, to give grace to ourselves um, because of, of we're, not, we're not perfect. We don't know everything. And God has allowed us uh, to, to live on this great, this, this beautiful world um, that he's placed us in. And we are still attempting to cultivate it and learn mm -hmm. and, and take care of it. And there, you know, we do live in a, uh, an imperfect world in and of itself. And that still, but that doesn't mean that we 
uh, should um, shy away from the responsibility to take care of it, you right. know, uh, because he's mandated that that task for us to do. On top of that, we are, you know, we're able to. I mean, just like, why why would you want to live in a world that is just covered in oil spills and mm-hmm. like an yeah. algae that's like, you know, killing the manatees in Florida and things like that, you know, it's just like, it's, uh, that's not the, that's, God is a God of life and he's a God of abundance and we mm-hmm. want to continue to be those people who are people of life and people of abundance, yeah. continue to care for his creation. So um, that's, that's really awesome. So actually let's like, just go to the last question and kind of start wrapping things up, which is like, how can Christians like better care for creation? What are, what are some of your thoughts and ideas on that? So. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily specifically Christians. I think there's yeah. lots that, you know, we can all do. But um, they're, you know, using some of the, yeah. the current research, looking at what scientists are studying and trying to Same understand, um, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, right? Yeah. Like it goes over and over again. We, yeah. we learn about that. But there's so many things, you know, those Amazon <laughs> packages, the blue and white ones, right? Those are, yeah. all can be recycled. Okay, cool. Um, but, you know, finding, know. Yeah. finding specific places, <laughs> yeah. right? They go in the grocery bins okay. or the, like at the grocery store, store with the yeah. shopping bags. Yeah. Yeah. You want to recycle those? Cool. Um, but there's so many different things that we can be doing and reducing our footprint, right? Yeah. So um, meat is yeah. super unsustainable, yeah. right? So we realize like yeah. that we really struggle across the world to produce enough meat. And so eating more, you know, vegetarian meals is not a bad thing. And, you know, just consuming less meat, Um, investing in alternate energy here in Oregon. I think um, we're able to, through like the electric companies, you can even say, I want all of my electricity to come from alternative fuel. And so it might cost a little bit more, but you're, you know, you're investing in the technology too, to make it less, you know, expensive yeah, less overall. Expensive yeah. um, and with electric yeah. vehicles coming out now, the way that they are yeah. so much more efficient and a lot more reasonable. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's so many different ways that we yeah. can be doing it, but I think too, just kind of reading up and understanding like, you know, where things are going wrong and how to yeah. prevent those things from happening too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I was just, uh, I was just watching a, a video today and it was like uh, one like quarter pound of burger, whatever, it was like 15,000 liters of water. Mm-hmm. Like just mind blowing for like that one yeah. little piece of meat. Like it's not even a lot of meat. Like it's, it's a quarter pound burger yeah. and it was like 15,000 liters. So it was just, it was just mind blowing to see that. Um, and there's so many things here, right. That, that we can be doing in order to, um, help like just the creation be more sustainable. I, I know for a fact as, someone who like moved from florida uh you know up and florida is great but it is definitely like not the state where you want to like be outdoors all the time mm-hmm. and you know yeah. for sure and when i've <clears throat> come up to the pacific northwest for the past year i mean just like being in in nature and in creation is like the draw of this mm-hmm. place and yeah. it is incredible and i've never been more of a person who cared about creation since like coming up here it's like oh this is incredible i don't want to be in air conditioning all the time i want to be outside you know so so it was it was great and um there's such a beauty in in what god's made and we've been responsible to protect it and i think those are some great examples of of ways that we can do that and and everybody can be involved not just christians but we definitely have a responsibility as people who have been called by god to steward his creation to, to do that as well so um, so that, that's going to kind of start wrapping things up here. I just want to, before we go, <clears throat> talk about our giving. And if you'd like to give to Anthem today um, in order to uh, just car- continue to carry out uh, God's mission uh, in this world through Anthem and what he's doing. So feel free to give. And there's two ways you can do that. <clears throat> you can text right now to 971-272-8500. Um, and you just text give and we'll send you out the link. Or you can visit anthemtribe.org slash give. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray for our offering today. So, <sighs> Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for um, the generosity of this community that you continue to, uh, first of all, be generous to us in so many ways. Um, it's in you we live and move and have our being. And because of your great love for us, we're here and we are, most of us are cared for and clothed and warm and in and in homes and have this beautiful world that we can live in. And because of your great generosity uh, to us, we can be generous uh, to uh, your people and to your kingdom, Father. And so 
uh, for those who are giving today, we're just so thankful for their generosity and that we pray that God, that we would use uh, these gifts uh, from you ultimately to steward them well, to further your kingdom in this world. So people come to know you and have a, a deeper understanding of who you are and grow in their relationship with you, Father. So we're thankful for that. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you guys um, <clears throat> so much for joining us uh, this Sunday. It's a, a short one, shorter than last week. So I appreciate you hanging in there. Um, we are going to do a Zoom community right after this. So click the link in the bio. Last week, I was all there by myself. So I would like a couple people to join me if you can. So I'm not, I'm not there. Maybe Kyle can join me. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so we got a, got a maybe on the RSVP. So that's good. But anyway, so, uh, so just click the link in the, bio, uh, in the description to, to join that. And then we will be regathering here as far as we know. I'm so excited about that uh, next Sunday, August 1st, 4 p.m. More information coming out about that. Thank you so much, guys. Let me say this blessing, and then we'll go. If you want to raise your hands. Um, Father, I just pray as we go out this week that um, our people could be a blessing to your creation, that we would um, be able to see the good resources that you have provided for us and take care of them and be responsible with them and show uh, and show this world the kindness that that you want us to show it, Father. So we're thankful for that. And you just continue to bless us and bless this world. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, Anthem. Just like Paul, just too soon. <laughs>